Hey, what's up my fellow reefers, Fragbox TV. Today I'm gonna to show you one of my favorite soft corals. Okay, what's going on? This is it right here. This is one of my all time favorite soft corals. These are called clove polyps. They're really, really cool and I'm just gonna give you some tips on how to keep them in your tank because I love them and I want you to love them too. So they're really easy to keep and they're very fast growing. I'm gonna get back to that in a second about the growth because some people get worried that they are invasive but they are not. Here we have two different types. So there's about 40 different species of clove polyps. They're pretty easy to tell apart. They don't really look like any other coral. They're basically like underwater flowers they're always going to have eight polyps and when they're healthy they have these sort of long stems so they reach about i want to say three inches max these ones are from indonesia which are they probably have some of the nicest ones we do get other ones actually the ones from australia sorry i've seen them even longer some of the ones from australia that we get in are sometimes as long as uh, six inches and the heads can get almost uh, golf ball size they get huge but when they're happy, they should be extended like this and they extend from this soft base, so it's a soft coral and they create kind of like a network or uh, a web underneath where they're gonna shoot out new stalks. So they're gonna grow on just about every surface. If I leave this guy here long enough, they'll usually, oh, look at that. This is from some other clove polyps that we had here, you can see on the rack. So they'll grow right, right onto the rack. I think you can see there on the camera. This is from, the rainbow variety, we must have had some frags there, but they'll grow on rock, on plastic, on glass, any surface really that they can grab onto. And they come in a lot of cool different colors. Let me see what varieties we have in the store today. This is sort of a pinky red, and these ones are a lime green, so these are pretty standard. And then we have some that we grow out here in our farm. Let me see if we have, I don't wanna make you guys dizzy with the camera, because I know I'm good at doing that. It's like my specialty. Let's walk around to this side. Here's one of our nice coral beds. Here's uh, Jonathan cleaning some of the acrofrags. What's up, JC? So, sorry, here. That's my sidetrack for the day. Very quick sidetrack, but here are some cool rainbow clove polyps. So we actually grow these ones in-house and people grow them and trade them back to us a lot. So they're very easy to grow and very easy to propagate too for a soft coral. So very easy to propagate. Uh, okay, question of the day. Do you have any clove polyps in your tank? And maybe do you have any tips? So if you have, please comment below. And then people that are watching the video, maybe something that I miss on this one here that you know maybe you have a different experience, you can help out a, um, a fellow reefer. So they do get traded back into our store quite often because I think they're really easy to frag. Uh, I think that's the reason why. You can literally frag these things with your fingers. So like, they're super soft and you just kind of like grab a polyp and you tear them apart and you can glue them down to a frag plug. So they grow in my experience very quickly in an aquarium, but I don't consider them invasive like I do um, some sorts of uh, Xenia or other soft coral. And it's because they're so easy to frag so that if it starts to cover your rock, you can literally just grab it and peel it back with ease. Like, peeling back skin or something, it's really freaky. And you can take the whole thing out. So yes, they do grow quick. Yes, they're gonna take over some portions of rock if they're happy, but they're super, super easy to remove. So I wouldn't be worried. Uh, pulsing Xenia, just for an example, on the other hand, once it starts to grow, it has a very strong foothold on the rock and it can get into nooks and crevices and it's not easy to remove. But this coral doesn't have any sting, so you don't have to be worried about any aggressiveness you can see here we have two of them literally touching and it can touch any other coral and it's not going to hurt it in any way shape or form so i think that goes for most soft corals they don't really have a sting um, someone here in the store was trying to convince me the other day that kenya tree has a sting uh, i'm going to go ahead and disagree with that i think it was dylan i could be wrong but i these guys for sure don't have a sting when it comes to flow i find that they like low to medium and after looking at them online, I know a lot of sites say medium to even high flow. From my own experience, I think they do well. They'll do well under most flow. They're quite an easy coral to keep. 
but I find that they do best under low flow. That's when they'll really open up and they can spread, but you do need some so that they keep their base clean because just the way that they grow, it's easy for them to trap detritus. So it's not a bad idea to take a turkey baster every once in a while, get in there and just blow the crud out. But I'm gonna say low to even very low flow. I've kept them like that. That's how we grow them. They do well. In terms of light, again, low to medium, like even very low. I find them growing um, on the underside of rocks sometimes. They'll stretch out from there or in the corners of tanks. So par of like even under 100 is fine. And it's easy to give them too much light. So I see people often put them too high in a tank and they'll tell you very quickly that they're not happy. They're gonna shrivel up and they close and they're gonna be a lot smaller than they normally would be. So you wanna see them about an inch extending out from the base and they turn in like they'll still survive under high light you can get them acclimatized or used to higher light but they kind of they'll shrivel up and they're really 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 short and they almost look like a different coral they'll be like a quarter of an inch and the heads are super bright and saturated but they're not healthy so i would start them lower in the tank and if you really want them higher you can you can move them higher uh, over time but they're really cool because you get a lot of movement when the flow is on and i think people like that they want the tank to look alive they're looking for that motion that you get from these sorts of corals here like uh, frog spawn hammers and torches and all this like the euphilia which has lots and lots of movement so you get some of that same movement from the clove polyp without any of the aggressiveness and without any of um, the other issues that come with you know keeping lps corals because it's a soft coral because it's so easy to keep in terms of feeding you don't have to feed them they're 100 percent photosynthetic but we do feed our tanks here refroids, and if you do go over them with refroids, um, let me just show you that product. Maybe, I don't know where you're watching from or if you have access to this product here, but it's called refroids over there on the shelf. It's great stuff. It's a good all around coral food. Oh shit, Mr. Blasto, no. What's going on here? Damn it, maybe you got stung. Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked again. Very nice Blasto, but he's not looking too happy. But they do, um, they will accept feeding, and it's pretty cool to watch the, the mouths or the heads, the polyps will close around the food and they almost look like a pulsing Xenia. Um, I think that's it for this video. But yeah, if you guys got any questions or comments about these clove polyps, about corals in general, this stunning hammer coral over here, anything at all, I'm gonna leave our contact info at the end of the video, hit us up. You know, we love talking about this stuff. This beautiful red elegance is going to his forever home today. This was a, didn't last long, very, very special piece. I've never personally seen a red elegance before much much nicer in person um, I'm talking a lot today because I haven't done videos in a while so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up but thank you very much for watching guys this is Fragbox TV